show. An audience has queued to see you. Tonight you're having an arm amputated. Fully conscious, you scream with pain. That was surgery in Dickensian London. No wonder the world was so desperate for anaesthetics. The brave pioneers of pain control poison themselves and their servants in search of the perfect knockout. They blew up operating theatres and lost their minds so that we could have major surgery and not feel a thing. They went in search of oblivion and this is their story. Before anaesthetics, an evening at an operating theatre was a great night out. Audiences would go to see the blood, smell the wounds and hear the screams. They could also marvel at the extraordinary speed of surgery. In early 19th century London, surgeons didn't come any faster than the Scottish maverick Robert Liston. Liston performed in small operating theatres open to the public. But he was more than just a sawbones. He was a great surgeon and a great performer who loved playing to the gallery. He never washed his hands before operating. Like most people at the time, he didn't understand the importance of hygiene. But he saved lives. Liston performed operations that other surgeons wouldn't touch. He would carve out tumours, amputate limbs and slash at gangrenous flesh. All on fully conscious patients. A man like Robert Liston wouldn't really have considered pain control at all, I don't think. He might have had the odd regret as the patient uh, screamed as the knife went in. But as he, as he did his work, he was really interested in how much he could impress the people who were watching him and how fast he could do his surgery. Could he beat his last time for a certain operation? Liston had to operate unbelievably fast before the patient was killed by shock from the pain. And that gave him his catchphrase. Time me, gentlemen. No. Time. No. From the patient's point of view, it was a whirlwind of black fear that would grip them. They would feel this sense that they had been abandoned into this, this terrible ordeal from which there was no escape. Liston would then slice through the flesh, all the way round the limb, saw through the bone and stitch the wound flaps to stop a torrent of blood. Robert Liston was always very conscious of a, an amputation being done well. So he forms a flap out of your skin, almost like a dress pattern. The assistant must catch instantly the artery. The artery is tied and what's left at the end is a padded stump. As well as this sort of showman style that surrounded Liston, there was undoubtedly huge skill. He, he couldn't have written the books he wrote. Uh, he couldn't have, have done the operations he performed unless he was a highly skilled surgeon. Liston was so fast he could remove a limb in just 28 seconds before holding the severed stump up in the air. The audience loved it. But people needing operations weren't quite as keen. Before anaesthesia, patients knew they might die without surgery, but many were so scared they would let their complaints fester until they'd reached record proportions. Anyone who had a deformity or a growth would basically just have to live with it. Sometimes, to tremendous extremes, there are cases of women who had ovarian cysts that weighed more than they did, and they would have to suffer these rather than have surgery. One of Liston's patients is reported to have had a tumour on his scrotum so large he had to push it around in a wheelbarrow. But even if a patient agreed to have surgery, that didn't mean they could bear to go through with it on the day. Another of Liston's patients was booked for a bladder stone operation. It was a painful procedure. It involved inserting a rod into the patient's penis and pushing the stone out through a cut made between the legs. Liston's patient was so scared of the bladder stone operation that he threw off the assistants restraining him and locked himself in the loo. Liston strode down the corridor and smashed down the door with his shoulder. He dragged his petrified patient back to the operating table and carried on with the procedure. Bladder stone operations are quite um, traumatic because of the region of the body. So the master cutters would do this very quickly. They got it from 45 minutes down to 45 seconds. 
and it's very high success rate on that. But the medical establishment hated Liston. Some accounts of his life suggest he perfected his study of anatomy by grave robbing. As soon as Liston qualified in Edinburgh, he started to operate on patients, often judged unsuitable for treatment by other surgeons. Many times he went to their houses to chop off a diseased limb. As one Edinburgh doctor put it, Before the days of anaesthetics, a patient was like a criminal awaiting execution. They counted the days, then the hours as they listened for the echo in the street of the surgeon, and watched for the pull of the doorbell, the foot on the stair, and the step into the room. The production of his dreaded instruments then surrendered their liberty and, revolting at the necessity, submitted to be held or bound and helplessly give themselves up to his cruel knife. Liston's contempt for his colleagues got him barred from the wards in Edinburgh. He moved to London where he was successful enough to afford a house in Clifford Street, Mayfair. But his abrasive arrogance continued to make him unpopular. And that might explain why his surgical mistakes were so gleefully recorded. Liston's speed with the knife was bad news for one patient expecting to lose his leg. The knife went too far. The patient lost a testicle as well. One of Liston's assistants fared even worse. Whilst holding a patient's leg during an operation, Liston slashed off two of his fingers. He later died of septicemia. The patient also died in one of the first operations with a 200% mortality rate. There were pain relief agents around at the time, like willow bark, mandrake and laudanum, but people like Liston had little time for them. If you were lucky, you might get roaring drunk before the operation, but usually the surgeon wouldn't let you. He'd like you to be conscious so he could tell if you were still alive. Alcohol is not advocated by surgeons at all. Um, it's basically because uh, the blood flow is increased. If you're a surgeon, your worst enemy is the release of artery, blood. You need to tie it quickly. Robert Liston is a great user of forcep clamp. But alcohol and the other pills and potions available couldn't counter such extreme pain. Something more potent needed to be found before Liston would be interested. In 1846, a butler called Churchill was waiting to be brought up to the operating theatre at University College Hospital, London. He was due to have his leg amputated by Robert Liston, the showman surgeon. At the last minute, Liston decided to try out a new substance from America that would change the history of medicine. <laughs> 